the one chart to rule them all. Welcome back to Crown's Crypto Cave as we get started for a nice little uh, Friday morning over here from a very rainy Helsinki, Finland. It was literally uh, hailing so loud last night that I was woken up at like 2 or 3 a.m. for God knows who, how long. But, but we're here now, so we might as well do it. And uh, there's actually plenty to talk about because today's a pretty damn important day for not just uh, not just spot price action as it can confirm some pretty massive things, but also CME is going to be closing for the week as well. So that's going to have major implications into the overall price action. And we're actually setting up for potentially a pretty big move here so uh, i do want to avoid clickbait statements but i actually do uh well i do pretty much stand by that anyways <laughs> more importantly um i do want to say that i will not be on twitch later today uh elsa probably will though she'll be at elsa 69 uh, <laughs> you can hear in the background right there. She's editing videos right now. And uh, what else do I want to say? The Crown Trading application, it's right there. It's its free also as well. You can find it at app.crowntrading.net. I also can't speak English, so there's that. <laughs> Apologies. I have had too many cups of coffee this morning uh, to get the old juices started. Anyways, uh, we do see that the open interest is still hanging around that 800 million mark. And the way that I kind of see this phase right now is anywhere between about 750 million to about 950 million is within the context of the higher term time frame range that we've been speaking about for the last like for the last I don't know I guess week now uh, between the 8500 ish region and the upper 9000s essentially so I'm really still looking for another 100 million to be added in order to really confirm the next major shift in market phase whether it be to the upside or the downside accompanied by a break in one of those critical levels as well so that's always in the back of my mind's eye but we are kind of set up here rather nicely for a potentially uh, pretty nice move probably sooner rather than later anyways um we do see that bitcoin dominance headed up from yesterday to today I, I know that it says from 67 spot 7 but yesterday it was definitely 67 i remember that so what the fuck hey what the fuck over here anyways uh more importantly i'd still remain bullish on that assuming that we do see well we'll we'll look at it again today but uh but we've been bullish on it i'll still i'll still remain bullish on it most likely uh and i still do think that it heads up above 70 percent so most altcoins versus satoshi is not going to be doing all that well so if bitcoin goes up i'd expect expect all coins to not go up as much or maybe even go down if bitcoin goes down i'd expect them to go down more versus us dollar is what that kind of implies looking at all, all the other top end metrics not really too much to update there crypto fear and greed index ticking out of 44 right now so actually went up <laughs> actually went up from yesterday to today even though we did have a nice little pullback from our uh, medium term target at 9800 ish region so i do want to start to follow up from yesterday's price action because we did hit our top side target or sorry we first fulfilled our short term area at uh, 9400 when I was recording that video and that and then we were catapulted to our next uh, target at about 9800 street and give or take about 100 bucks and uh and now where are we well Bitcoin kind of consulting and setting up now before oh sorry before I actually get into the actual price action analysis I should say um uh I am still I am still what the fuck what, what was I gonna say I forgot what I was going to say. I don't know what I was going to say. Let's just get on with it right now. Ah, that's what it was. Yes. So I uh, I have been uploading uh, videos to my new gaming channel. I want to eventually have a channel for all of my different hobbies or, or just things that I do in life, I guess. And, you know, obviously this one's for finances. So it takes care of that aspect. At some point, probably have a health one, maybe a mindset one as well at some point. But right now, focusing on uh, putting up a gaming channel, which can be found at Total Crown here on YouTube. If you want to go check that out, please be my guest because uh, it's a very, very small channel right now. It's very... Uh, tighten it um I, but you know but of course most people aren't gonna be interested in something like that especially if you're coming from this area over here so don't be obligated it's all good if that doesn't interest you just 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 ignore just ignore it's all good anyways but for the people out there who are interested in strategy games and shit like that let's fucking do it baby okay so here's what i was referring to uh as far as opening statements go cme chart is actually set up rather well here we do have a golden cross which which is either going to be confirmed today or has already been confirmed depending upon how aggressive you are i would say that if you are using a 50 rather than a 55 which i'm currently using a 55 it's probably already confirmed yes indeed it is but i want to go back to the 55 because i do enjoy or i do typically err on the side of caution uh and more importantly as long as we are above that yellow 21 expansion average not only do we have an uptrend on the daily but 
but we will naturally really really start to confirm an aggressive uh, golden cross here and there's a few other easy ways to just be looking at this chart as it is any any sort of a tick above even yesterday's high doesn't even really need to get above the 7th of may high for myself but even just yesterday's high at uh 10,070 on cmes i would look for continuation um very very likely to the last prior high that we put in in early february at about uh, 10,500 i believe it was on spot um overall things are looking very interesting here as we do see momentum oscillators kind of shift back around in fact we do see that uh, daily rsi is actually kind of getting rejected at the current moment in time so i would be a little bit cautious off that but the levels here are very 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 simple and well it's never simple but they're very well defined which is what i like as a trader and you know to the upside i think i, I do still kind of stick with that as my sort of gatekeeper for the next upside move for the downside it's a little bit more diabolical here. Um, if we go down to a lower term time frame on CMEs, we can see that Bitcoin did kind of spike down to our lower blue box right here and is so far holding it on a four hour total closure. However, I am a little bit skeptical of that. I do have a sneaky suspicion that we will head down a little bit lower um, just based off of CMEs right here, but I'd feel a lot more confident in kind of targeting a move like that if and only if we take out the uh, the low that we already have on today's daily dildo at 92.90 on CMEs and on Bitcoin spot price action, it would be 92.04. Uh, can't speak, man. Can't speak on BitMexico. Um, and same sort of thing here on BitMexico as well. Got the golden cross above all major moving averages as well. And I'm just not, I'm not bearish on anything for the uh, for the medium or long term that has that sort of signature on it. And yes, we are above all major moving averages right here as the 10 simples coming in right around about 93, 93.25 it looks like. So overall, as long as we're closing dailies above there, I, I still remain like short term uh, bullish, but uh, but medium and long term, I do still like the setup. And, uh, and if Bitcoin did come back down and test around the 20 minutes moving average, sometime around this weekend i'd likely look at that as a uh as a um what's it called an opportunity uh of course can it break it as well yes i mean this game is statistics but um but you know i take the trades when they come to me and if that one does break then i you know i would look for a move back down to about low 8,000, that 8100 ish region but realistically right now man the trend is your friend until the end of the trend and uh and as it stands trend looking okay here also daily momentum uh, oscillators looking like they could turn back up as well we do have this trend line coming in from our uh late february lows right here which would be kind of protecting against the edge of the bearish control zone so i do like that if bitcoin were to come back down there sometime over the weekend however as it stands right now just for uh just for uh reference the daily stokes will actually cross the upside as long as bitcoin remains above 92 to 17 spot three uh, on this next closure and you know where do we find our last little kind of wick low it's very interesting to see that actually a lot of these a lot of the time these things do tend to line up with resistances and supports you know you can actually even see right here a nice resistance you can see right here so far a nice a nice support at least for a short-term scalp so i do like that and i would remain with a short medium and even long term you really can't say like bullish until we actually go into a weekly uptrend but you know it's 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 close it's very very close um hey get off there get off there instagram damn it uh <laughs> and uh and so you know as long as we're closing above that especially above all major moving averages here with the golden cross pretty much just freshly confirmed i would say that that uh likely does bode well for bitcoin price action not only that we do see the 12 hour sto stokes which have also been <laughs> a phenomenal little cheat code still headed up right here as well and uh and and that momentum will remain to the upside as long as we are above about 8800 ish region as you can see on a 12 hour total closure which we get the next one closing in six hours and 57 minutes and 46 seconds so i do like that there as well so that also means though it gives us a kind of a nice little natural target if bitcoin does break the low of today at 9204 again on mexico if that does happen i would look for an extension of another 400 to to, to 500 dollars to the downside actually and fill out this space down here somewhere between uh 8800 and uh and about 80 what is this 8600 that's not all that helpful that's a little bit too maybe like 8750 and uh and 8650 is kind of where we're looking towards let's actually throw on the blue boxes of peace and prosperity here there they are. And we can actually move this one up just a smidgen, I suppose, uh, from the 8600 level to now the 80, yeah, the 86 to 87 ish level. And I'll stick with that one. We can, I, I do feel confident with that. Also kind of line up with the lower term, uh, time frame, um, moving averages at the same time. So I do like all of that. Now, of course, same sort of logic applies as I've been saying for this past week, if Bitcoin were to break this blue box right here, which I can now kind of move up to about 8,600, I would look for extension down to our lower end of the, of the long term. um, uh, 
uh, trend line coming in all the way from March 13th uh, at 4,400, I would look for a move all the way down to about 8,150 to 8,200-ish region, which this one can probably move up a little bit, uh, well, a little bit as well now. Um, and realistically, if we do get back down around there, I, I do think that we probably would end up, you know, probably bounce on the first pass, but ultimately head further south towards uh, towards 7,500 and a nice medium-term time frame bounce there, and then continuation of 7,000. Then I'd come back and, and want to reassess. Uh, you know, do we have more downside or not? Um, but for right now, you know, Bitcoin's knocking on the door of the upside. Now, of course, it has gotten rejected from the same areas that we've had marked off here for a long time, but and, and that's kind of to be expected. But now, you know, where does this next day end is actually going to be really, 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 really critical to setting up for this next major move. What I also like is that the Golden Cross moving averages right here, you can see that they're actually crossing into a bullish perspective as we still follow this trend line right here. And always remember, that, you know, a trend line and a moving average are kind of, they're not the same thing, but they are representing a similar thing. The trend, essentially, I mean, that's all it is at the end of the day. That's the value in a moving average just tells you over the long period of time, are we going up or down? And price action relationship to it and then you can obviously make it a lot more a lot more complicated than that you know looking at derivatives and whatnot and that's very very useful don't get me wrong but at its base that's all it is well it's a trend line it's just measuring the trend you know and so that kind of coming in that same area does add protection along this you know along this uh you know along this long-term trend line so even if we did get back down around there i would you know i'd still be a little bit cautious cautious to get like too bearish um but but anywhere below you know to be 100 direct anywhere below about 8100 on a daily to closure yes i'm you're gonna see me get bearish for at least another thousand dollar move to the downside but right now i actually think that the upside is a lot more likely um we'll look at probabilities a little bit later but realistically the same levels to the upside uh still apply um if bitcoin does take out yesterday's high uh you know we can kind of move this one down a little bit here but if bitcoin does take out yesterday's high at 99.70 even just ticks above there on mexico um and i'm going to put an alert there right now i would look for extension all the way up here towards 10.5 um 10.5 is where things start to get really really interesting once again everyone fucking is, is is aware of this area of course because you see it all over crypto twitter and crypto youtube and crypto whatever the fuck crypto 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 perhaps as well um if that were to happen then i would look for another extension of a thousand dollars to eleven thousand five hundred and looking at all all major moving averages here alongside cme's uh, chart which i put a lot more weight on um i do think that the upside is more likely without looking at probabilities we'll look at probabilities later of course but um but i do want to be on the record as saying that uh it's very very interesting to see a lot of people get very bearish after something like this this is not a bearish setup on moving averages as it is as long as we are above the 21 exponential moving average on the weekly I i'm not long-term bearish and where does the 21 come in at oh what do you know around 8100 funny how that works out and not only that but we're crossing a lower period to the upside of a higher period and bitcoin price sessions come down and tested it once and twice being being quite resilient upon it as well as momentum also to continue to head upwards and onwards and have plenty of space to the upside there and they will remain to the upside more importantly as long as bitcoin spot price action is above 69.29 uh, on a weekly dildo closure, weekly RSI is also confirming a retest of the broken falling wedge or falling channel, depending upon which which way you kind of want to look at this, or maybe it does just make a falling channel. This is why I do hate wedges because you actually could do something like this as well, and that's usually how actually how wedges go. But for right now, I will kind of uh, chart it out as a wedge. More importantly, um, if we go to CMEs, which I trust a lot more for something like this, we do see kind of the same sort of thing. And as long as Bitcoin price action is above, you know, especially like 9,200. I believe that this will just be interpreted as a retest of this broken resistance now support. And, you know, I go with that until told otherwise and probably target. You know, realistically, you can't come up with a measure move based upon something like this. You can't just say, oh, it's going up to like 85 because, you know, it's the difference between these two. No, but I would say that it would, it would, it would at the very least get up to about, you know, the, the mid 70s here, extremely likely um, if this is indeed the one to be playing. But with all with momentum also just kind of turning up like that on Stokes and also looking at the weekly jewel giving you a hotter your long signal not that long ago about uh 20th of april it looks like so somewhere right around here at about 7,000. um i do think that it's relevant to think that uh you know we probably we probably we, we probably do play that out um again i i should really divorce my opinion from actual technical analysis i do not trade my opinion to be 100 percent clear trade technical analysis and at the end of the day you know the areas that i kind of marked off and have been showing for the last uh, couple weeks are are where i'd still be going off of but uh but just kind of painting the picture here a little bit more and explaining you know my sort of reasoning for being biased in that direction having a little bit of a bull boner bias um i you know i i i do feel okay with that at least as it is right now and very easy areas to manage more importantly 
certainly, of course, there's going to be people out there who don't understand trading, and they're going to say, oh, so you're saying that you could be wrong. It's like, well, yes, uh, I can always be wrong. Duh. Fucking duh. It's like, what do you think this is, man? <laughs> the, the more important thing is that you don't actually need to be right in order to make money. You just need to know how to trade, uh, which is essentially just a, an interaction between knowing your entry, exit, and, well, exit as far as position management goes, but also as far as risk management goes alongside your entry and some sort of interplay between those. It's going to create a nice statistical uh, advantage for you, assuming that you do it properly, and then you can make a living like that. It ain't nothing more than that at the end of the day, no matter which tools that you're using. Um, anyways, uh, so yeah, as it stands right now, I actually do look at this as kind of my first read on this. Could it be the same thing as spot price action where it ends up being something like this? Yes, that is possible. That is actually very possible. Um, but but for now, I'd kind of I'd kind of chart it as this just because I, well, I'd, well, if that does happen and then we close above the 618 here at uh, 9900, I mean, that's pretty hard to argue with. I do think for at least extension, another another 600, 700 bucks to 10.5 and then probably extension above there towards uh, 11.5 to 12,000 long term on CMEs. Now, of course, there is a pre premium there, um, but keep that in mind. You know, th those levels are pretty damn consistent. And if we go back to spot price action right here. Uh, we can see basically the same levels essentially charted out. Uh, top side resistance, you know, on a daily total closing basis could still say uh, it's 98.50. It is, it is rather nice how it's per played off this just about perfectly. Also in line with 6.8 Fibonacci retracement. Also in line with our long-term breakdown liquid zone coming in from uh, late February, going all the way from 10,000 down to 4,400. And then obviously the major rejection that we saw here. Jesus, this chart is way too convoluted now. The major rejection that we saw here when China like banned or unbanned Bitcoin. I forget which one it is, but you know what I'm talking about. This this uh, this one right here at about 9,500. So what I really want to see is I want to see um I, is I want to see uh, spot price action close above at least 95. 500 that would retain my weekly bullish bias um and if cmes could close anywhere anywhere above uh 9700 would looks good uh to, to to close it this week but any and any sort of a move above last week's high i, I really do think 10 to 220 or even this week's high is very likely to incite continuation at the very least to the last prior high right here at about 10 it's about 10 700 on cmes so that probably means that spot price action would be somewhere around like 10 5 10 6 region uh, you never know how much the premium is, especially with half of the month still to go. Um, but, you know, momentum also just, you know, on, on CMEs look more or less the same. Weekly stokes look good there. Um, and overall, I, I really like the moving average setup here as well. I mean, I didn't really go through much of a deep dive here on the weekly, but I suppose that we can because we got time. And uh, looking at the weekly 21, I've been saying this for a while, as long as Bitcoin's above it and it has a positive slope, I mean, that's been your bull markets and your bear markets when the opposite is true. So going all the way back to 2012, you know, anytime the Bitcoin price action is above, good. And then if you add on the slope analysis to the 21, I mean, you, that tells you to stay long this, this whole way from five dollars and twenty cents to realistically um, all the way up here at eleven hundred. So that's uh, that's a trade of a lifetime. Um, <laughs> that's that's a pretty damn good trade, <laughs> I would think. Uh, and then of course to the downside, same is true right here as well. It tells you you know not not really the time to be getting uh, to to be adding long positions right here as it does start to get a negative slope. Then price action breaks below on a consistent basis, and then boom, there's your bear market. There's your bull market right there. There's your bear market right there. There's your bull market right there. And what do you know? Right now we do have uh, two consecutive opens and closes uh, in the main making above this moving average plus a pretty damn uh, positive slope. Now, could we get some like that we got right in over here? Yeah, absolutely. 100% absolutely. So I would still say that looking for continuation is probably the most key ingredient in this one right now. And uh, in the level is still more or less the same. And of course, if we do add on, whoops, not you. Hold on, get off there. If we do add on the 55 as well, you know, we do see a nice interplay between these two moving averages over the long period of time. Not as many iterations as the lower time frames that we have for like the golden crosses on the 12 hour on daily, but you know, similar reaction right here, similar reaction right here, and then not really at the genesis. Can't, can't really count that one to be fair. But if we go down to those lower term time frames, we'll see about the same thing. I mean, even even as low as like a two day, right? We do have that same sort of golden cross. In fact, I would say the two day golden cross is probably the most efficacious one right now. Um, and, uh, and as long as we're above all major moving averages here, I have no reason to be bearish but that means that uh, Bitcoin has a nice base somewhere around 9,000, even good psychological number as well. But, you know, you got the golden cross right here, test down to the 21 as they all kind of splay out. That's good. And as long as we are above the 21, they will naturally gain more and more divergence away from each other, which is telling us that the bots and algos are actually playing that cross the upside. And that's whose side I want to be on in a market like this or any market for that matter. You know, if we go back in the history of uh, Bitcoin, we have another 
example right here gets a golden cross comes down to the 21 holds it back above the 10 simple right here boom a massive move from 7,000 to 14,000 uh, same thing to the downside uh, except this iteration right here did not work out pretty damn well you probably remember that one because I was getting bearish off that one myself uh, this guy over here phenomenal one as well two-day golden cross comes all the way down to the 55 where you accumulates and then all the way from 400 420 to 20,000 buckaroonies buckaroonies who the fuck says that crown wow hi hello you came to the wrong place today <laughs> jesus man uh and then of course you know we just we we already looked at the daily um i think the daily kind of speaks for itself and then the 12 hour actually as well i think the 12 hour was the most obvious one or the 12 hour on the two day but the 12 hour uh specifically just because it came first remember we were talking about this all the way back around uh 7700 or, or sorry not 7700 but uh but uh, but the spur this first spike above like uh, mid 8000s um you know did give an initial continuation and then where does it come down to 55 reaccumulates remains in a positive slope telling you that the boston augers are kind of accumulating on this region so that's a nice good base and where does that 55 come in around now? 80, 8,600. So I really like that area for kind of getting the medium term downside once again. Uh, and also, you know, just looking at trend. I mean, you know, Bitcoin goes back down below there and closes below, let's call it uh, 8,600. Well, we now have a downtrend on the uh, on the 12 hour. Anyways, uh, you know, throughout the history, same sort of thing. Golden cross right here comes all the way down to the 55, reaccumulates. Boom. Nice move up two and a half thousand bucks. Uh, great, great example right here. Again, in the golden cross, boom, major move up, reaccumulates on the 55, and then th almost a 3x from 5,000 to 14,000. Go back a little bit further. We can go all the way on over here. Bitcoin gets a golden cross on the 12 hour right here. Massive move up initially, comes back down, re, uh, sorry, reaccumulates on the 55, and then lovely times once again. Actually gives a little bit of a fake out right there, but uh, but did not officially cross, and that pretty much goes all the way to 20,000 from there. Uh, pretty fucking good. So overall, um, what I can say is on the medium term time frames, I'm not bearish as long as Bitcoin's above 8,600, we'll call it, on a, on at least like a four hour total closing basis. If we do start to break below there, I would look for extension to the low side of the range uh 8100 to 80 8150 to 8200 now actually does move up a little bit and uh and that's that's the big area for the long term if this area does start to get broken that's where i start to change around my long-term bias boner to the downside at least another thousand dollars continuation down to 7100 uh over time um with a quick move down to 75 uh relatively fast i would think um with bounces along the way of course too but um but you know for right now bitcoin's being resilient in this region and let's look at our lower term time frame momentum monster is now as uh as i'm um, okay let's first see it, what's what's interesting here so we do actually we did actually have a little bit of bearish divergence here after we put in the next high at about 9800 nice i think that we played most of that out by coming down to the 21 but with four hour historical volatility percentile or sorry with four hour uh, stokes coming down they will remain to the downside as long as bitcoin price action is below 9800 where is 9800 pretty much around on the closing basis where our last four hour high was and more importantly the long-term resistances that we were just speaking about before sorry not just the 618 not just the liquid zone and also the big fake out that we saw from uh from from china news or whatever the fuck and but uh, but also the long-term downturn resistance coming in from the fourteen thousand dollar high right here re oh, jesus christ you can't even see it right now i forgot to mention this but it's mostly the same people watching these videos anyway, so you probably already know. Uh, this video, this or sorry, this channel, I'm pretty sure has been shadow banned, and I'm actually really happy about it. You know how like all the other YouTubers are going crazy because, guys, YouTube shadow banned me. What do I do? <laughs> it's like I actually kind of want that because I don't, I, I, I don't live off YouTube ad revenue or anything like that, and I don't really understand how most people can do that. I mean, maybe if you're getting like shit tons of view every day, if you're getting like twenty to thirty thousand views every day, maybe you could probably do it. Uh, but for myself, you. I, I think I think I'd be considered poverty by the uh, by the government. So uh, so I, I I don't I don't care about that. And I actually kind of like the feeling of a smaller community. And by this time we're in minute 23. So this is a smaller community right now. I can look in, I can look you straight in the eye and speak directly to you, man. I love you, man. And also women's out there. If you're listening and you don't identify with those gender pronouns, well, I love you too, whatever you would like to be called. But, but, uh, but you know, that, you know, that, that's the kind of person who I really do this channel for that, like the person who's like really, really fucking into this. Cause I'm really fucking into this too. So, I mean, how else do you, how else do you speak about this shit for 40 minutes long every day uh, without anyone else adding any input? It's kind of funny. Um, 
but yeah okay so so yeah we documented this area right here yes we get that a lot of resistance is coming in around there and of course that's where our low term time frame momentum oscillators would turn back up again so i do think that we're probably going to play out some short term downside here come back down test around uh like the nine thousand dollar level wherever this blue box is yeah not 90 50 to 91 50 ish region and uh and assuming that that area doesn't get broken um i would be looking for it just kind of reaccumulate there and then sometime into next week probably gives another test back up to the upside over here assuming uh, if if we were to break 9050 i would look for an extension down to about 8600 ish region 8650 ish region something like that um and play out another bounce there um, but I really don't even get medium term bearish until we actually break below this area right here, 8,600 on it. At the very least, a four hour total closing basis, 12 hour probably better there though. Uh, let's see what the lower term time frame oscillators are, are saying as well. Do they agree with the four hour? Yes, mostly they do. Three hour stokes coming down as well, uh, and they will not cross back up as long as Bitcoin's below 9,750. So that kind of does, or that, that does make sense. Also triple hour, uh, three, or sorry, three hour, triple hour, the three hour, uh, sto or sorry, RSI, looks you know looks a little bit dumpy to me as well you know probably a small bounce here but I, I think that that bounce likely gets sold into uh buy hourly um same sort of thing nose diving right there on the uh on on, on buy hourly so, so we do have a nice trend line coming in from our lows here though uh coming in right around the edge of the bearish control zone too so i do think that you naturally will see at the very least a nice scalp there um of course this is not financial advice i'm not a financial advisor but you probably already know what the fuck i'm doing anyways um hourly same thing so they're all kind of coming down at the same time so i do think that uh bitcoin very likely to play out maybe another short-term bounce off this current 9400 support but uh but the second that we see 9400 taken out or sorry maybe make that 9350 on like a two-hour total closure i would look for extension down to the 9050 ish region probably play out another small bounce there and i don't really have an i don't really have a strong opinion whether that one breaks or not but if it does break i would look for extension down to 8600 ish region and then set up for potentially another another accumulation low to be put in um and if that area breaks and then, then new things to consider realistically but for right now um you know, side, sideways and small downs to like the $9,000 base is fine for Bitcoin, as long as uh, higher term time frames are closing above the critical levels that we spoke about earlier. Uh, 9,400 being that big pivot as that is the 10 simple for, or sorry, it's not even 94, it's 93 is going to be the 10 simple for the, uh, for the daily right here. So as long as, you know, as long as Bitcoin's closing daily above there, I, I'm really not bearish uh, for like even a medium or long-term move, of course, for a short-term move, you know, yes, it's going to ebb and flow that changes around multiple times a day. But, um, but yeah, uh, uh, let's see and sorry where, where was the hourly stoke crossing uh changing around uh 9650 and what's up holy shit man hey how do you say that how do you say that man i don't know how to say your name but you know what i'm guessing you might be of russian descent good to meet you my russian comrade and uh welcome to the cave man um also what the fuck uh, what <laughs> hey man that language what is what 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 <laughs> I just how the can we just all speak the same fucking language for God's sakes? It would make it make communication so easy. It, I don't even care which language that we all speak. I mean, it would be nice if it's English because I already know how to speak it. But uh, if we all just spoke the same language, I think life would be better. Uh, anyways, to follow from the people who have the jewel, yes, this was a good signal on, for like a short term uh, short here. Um, not not typically the signals that I do take, but. Uh, because this one was so cooked i mean you go from 9750 down to 9200 that's pretty damn good for an hourly signal i wouldn't always expect a good uh sorry I, w I wouldn't always expect uh aggressive moves like that um do the two hour have one no nah, not, nothing's kind of setting up on the two hour or three hour or four hour actually I'm not seeing the same things um so yeah or sorry, this is six hour right here. But yes, yeah, six six hour looking like it wants to turn down relatively soon too. Historical volatility percentile, you know, we did see that expansion start from yesterday, by the way. Um, this was the same one that we were speaking about, right? Uh, this guy right here. Yes, we were contracting all the way from 10th of May to where we were yesterday. We saw that nice spike up on the 14th. And I do believe that we're still going to be expanding here. So I do think that that expansion likely does come come with another test to the top side of this resistance right here. So just kind of playing out, uh, you know, a range between about 93.50 and 98.50. And then the resolution of that range, whether it be to the upside or the downside, is going to get the next, the next, well, at the very least, short-term move to the upside a lot more interesting because that can really translate into a long-term and even macro move, especially above 11,500, as we spoke about. Um, to the downside, a little bit less exciting just because uh, it really only changed the short-term. Look for extension, like I said, to 9,000 base, uh, probably a small bounce there, and then continuation potentially down to 8,600, depending upon where that one closes. Um, let's go check out expected moves chart with regards to historical volatility percentile. 
and uh first things first look at the daily so i'm using still the same ranges as yesterday so this is this relates to the uh to the high term time frame range on both sides 9800 to the upside and uh 8600 to the downside um not uh obviously the upside is actually significantly more probable here uh with 21 spot zero six percent uh likelihood um or probability and below target probability is a little bit under four and a half percent so upside is still uh significantly more likely like i said anything uh anything above 16 percent is actually like uh, within the realm of possibility within the realm of reasonable possibility um uh anything below like anything below like three percent is where it starts to get like really really low but uh five percent is is on, you know on the edge of 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 reasonable i suppose um anyways look at a 12 hour closure for the same time frame range uh we do see a le uh, sorry 12 and a quarter to the upside above 9800 to the downside uh three quarters of a percent but that's not really fair for a time frame like this we should really move that up to about um let's see i, I think 90 let's actually look at 9300 um 9300 remember that is where the daily 10 simple is so bitcoin will remain as posturing above all major move never just on the daily uh, yeah, 9314. Okay, cool. Um, so as you know, as long as Bitcoin is, uh, you know, sorry, Bitcoin's probability of remaining on a 12 hour digital closure above 9300 sorry, uh, a breaking 9,300 on a 12, I did not sleep well last night, uh, breaking 9,300 on a 12 hour digital closure, uh, which is coming in six hours and six and a half hours from now is 39 and a half percent. So that actually, so it actually is going to have a chance to come, come down here. And that is a little bit more likely as it, uh, compared to the upside above 9,800 as it is right now. Uh, and that's again on a closure, but let's look at the daily. The daily is the one that matters more here, especially in this posturing, especially leading into the weekly close for CMEs today. And above target probability, 20.5%, 9,800, same, you know, same thing. But below target probability is going to be 42, almost 43%. So that is a pretty damn critical area. If Bitcoin remains above, which technically has about 58 or sorry, 57 chance, uh, 57 percent chance to do that or 57 percent probability to do that. Um, I'd still, I'll still remain with the short-term, medium-term, and and long-term uh, bullish buys, but uh, but for right now, um, you know, too early in the day to really call it. With 18 hours and 35 minutes left in the trading day, it would be silly of me to call that right now. Um, but let's go down to the lower-term time frames as well, and let's see. So those lower term time frame ranges i could say uh 9300 for the low term time frame range yeah same thing here actually okay cool uh 27 percent uh probability that we actually do close this next four hour delta below there um and that would very likely translate into a move down to like nine thousand dollar base and then another small bounce there and then we'll come back and reassess but i'm curious what the probability of actually breaking that level would be hey come on work uh, a breaking that level would be um, on maybe like a 12 hour, not on this four hour, but like on a 12 hour, yeah, on a four hour, it's gonna be very low. Uh, but on a 12 hour, what would it be? It would be 11%, so it's mm, not that likely, but, 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 but reasonable, I suppose. Um, and let's see, are these on current or future? Oh, sorry, these are on future right now. Anyways, uh, while we are here on future, let's look at the rings. The rings are squeezing to the upside still on the daily. I like that, that is good. Uh, that, does, that does provide another bias to the upside here. Uh, 12 hours says the same thing, but losing its uh, squeeze a little bit. Four hour is squeezing hard down. So what does that kind of translate to? It probably translates to a short-term pullback down to whatever our short-term support is, whether it be 9,300 or 9,000, and I would use 9,300 as kind of like a uh, documentable um, uh, pivot point uh, for the short terms, and uh, and then as long as daily you know close above those critical levels that we spoke about, I, you know it's, we're likely to see that still remain to the upside. Um, so I think we got all that. I think we got all that. Uh, four hour historical volatility percentile looks like it's starting to expand once again as well. So I do. I so this is not a confirmation of a new expansion phase just yet. What I need to see is I need to see that moving average start to uh, flatten and then curl up with a couple of sustained uh, increasing um, bars here. Uh, but for right now, it's possible. But I do think that. Mm, we need to see we need to see one at least one more tick and then a positive slope confirmed for like a tick or two uh and then i'd say yes we're still expanding if and if we're still expanding we're seeing this we're seeing we're seeing volatility expand with price action uh i'd look for another test up to like 9800 and at that point i'd look for uh whoops open interest oh, i guess i just flashed my email there fair enough uh open interest to, to, cli to climb back above about 900 million um anyways um okay cool what do we want to see now 
Uh, I should also represent, you know, the downside too. Um, there are a few more points in favor of the downside. T uh, two day stokes uh, looking like they want to cross the downside. However, or sorry, remain to the downside, but they will cross back up to the upside with any sort of a daily total closure, or sorry, today's daily total closure, which is a two day total closure above 95.40. And also they will regain the exponential on the RSI with any sort of a two day uh, total closure above 9,300. So actually like both of those two. Um, in fact, the two day, I think gets things a little bit better on this one. And we do see that, Mm. Oh, I don't have anything to say about that, actually. Uh, Three-day, same sort of thing here, too. Uh, let's see what price it would need in order to cross. The three-day looks bullish to me. I I'm, I'm, I'm... <sighs> this is what I should have shown you at the beginning of this video. Three-day looks fine. At, it, with any sort of a move above 10,085, I'd look for extension at the very least 10.5, and that's very likely to set up for a big move to the upside after that, after a short-term pullback. I, I, I like this, and look and look at where Momentum also has turned back around 9,700. So just closing back above basically the last little prior closing high right here is is likely to turn that back, or is going to turn that back up. You know, do we get a test back down to the 10 simple in the meantime, down around 86.50? I, I think that's possible. And let's see, does this one end today or tomorrow? Or no, oh, this one's fresh. Okay, so this one is actually showing a nice range here. This one is showing a nice range. I really wouldn't mind another test down to 8,600 um, ba based upon this. Uh, and I'd look at that as an opportunity. Um, uh, so fair enough. Okay, cool. Uh, especially with three days left to go on this one, you know, it's, it's, it's relatively new. So, there, you know, a lot of things can happen. We, it's really not worth analyzing until there's like less than a day to go. Um, at least for the purposes that I'm using it for it right now. Uh, let's go look at NAS futures. NAS futures bouncing up. Nicely done. Oh, another test down to the 21. What did we say yesterday? Probably reaccumulation along the 21 and probably another test back up to the top side of the range at 9,300. I, I think that this is still bullish. This is, an, this is a fucking uptrend. It just tested down to the 21. I, I don't see anything wrong with that at all whatsoever. Weekly still looks fine to me. We said this at the beginning of this week. Any sort of move down to low 8,000s or sorry, uh, upper 8,000s is is fine and is probably an opportunity and now going forwards it offers up a very easy and natural risk management point any sort of a move below this week's low at 80 at, at 88 and a half or 88.50 then yes i would look for extension down to our last prior low in the mid to low at 8000s region but I don't think that that's the path of least resistance right now, or at least it's going to get likely another try to the upside before anything else. Another fake out with a with an hourly golden cross here as well. I mean, this is, you know, follow the fucking trend. I mean, it's it's been up for a while. I think the crowded trade is to think that this thing is tipping over each and every fucking day, which is what you hear all along the news uh, outlets. I mean, you know, think about think about like the people who you well, no, I won't get into that statement. Um, I, I mean, same thing right here. Fakes the golden cross on the daily and then just straight up. All major moving averages are bullish right there. Uh, if this thing came back down to like 8,600, I, I don't even think that would be too problematic long term. Um, as long as it's above the 200 exponential mean average, fine. Uh, and I do think short term up here. Um, E-mini futures for SPY, same thing. <laughs> same thing. Really good close yesterday. Bringing it, bringing it back above the 21 and the 55 to close up yesterday. Uh, remaining, um, or sorry, lo looking, looking like we still have a higher low in place and offers up a very easy way to be managing risk from here. Uh, any, any move below yesterday's low at 2760, then yeah, I would look for continuation probably down to mid 260s, probably down to mid 260s. But for right now, uh, this thing looks like, uh oh, it looks like an uptrend. Hold on, but it also looks like we're making some sort of a symmetrical triangle right here too. And if we're making a symmetrical triangle, we can probably say that this is very likely to break out once it's around this region right here. Statistically speaking, it's it's likely to break out at least, and that's going to be the 19th of May, so middle of next or sorry, early next week. Um, and if it does break to the upside, you can already kind of visualize the measure move probably up towards the uh, the 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 three tens region um, overall. So yeah, uh, the trend is your friend, my friends, if you let it be. That also means if we, t you know, if, if we take out the low of yesterday, well, now we have a downtrend. So fair enough, <laughs> you know, reassess. Uh, gold breaking out to the upside, just like we said, uh, looking good here. I do think that it has more on this one to go. Yes, I do have this charted out as a, uh, as a descending triangle when I was representing the bearish look on this. But of course, what well, was the main look? A symmetrical triangle. We've been bullish on this thing for a long time. And I'm not even a fan of gold, but I do think that this thing has more to go. I think it's going to head up above 1800 very likely. Um, I should really back away from saying those sorts of words, but, um, you know, this, lo this looks constructive. This looks good. And what do you know? Another fucking uptrend. I mean, it's, just <laughs> it's beautiful. It's lovely. <laughs> Easy, breezy, beautiful. Um, <laughs> all right, let's go look at uh, Buterol really quick. Uh, going to do whatever Bitcoin does. Miss Litecoin, going to do what... This one looks a lot weaker, but going to do whatever Bitcoin does. Maybe let's go take a quick look at Link as well. I'm curious if this one's doing anything different. 
Um, Link's still resilient there. I, you know, I, I do think that over, I mean, overall, it's a fucking uptrend, right? Uh, weekly looks good. And if the weekly came down to two and a half bucks, I'd look at that as a math opportunity. I don't have an opinion though, if it actually blasts up here or comes down to two and a half bucks first. I don't have any opinion. It's right in the middle of the range as far as I see it. Momentum officers are, are in a more bullish posturing. So I would say that it has a, th it has a good threat of going up. I would use this last week's high, uh, not this week's high, but last week's high at 434 as kind of a nice decision point. And that's also our last closing weekly high. Yeah, about four, four, 445, we'll call it on a more conservative basis. If, if, if it does even just move above there, I, I very, very likely we'll see new highs. But if it closes above there, extremely likely we will see not just new highs, but major new highs. I mean, this thing is uh, still the best chart in cryptocurrency fund as far as I've seen. Um, okay, all right, back on a Bitcoin and... It's 40 minutes long already. Um, okay, so short-term time frames, 93.50 to the downside. If we do break that on a two-hour little closer, closure, I would look for extension down to 90.50 down here. If that one, I would look for a small bounce there first and foremost. If that one does end up breaking it below 90.50 or, or especially 9,000, I'd look for extension all the way down at uh, 8,600 and I'd probably look at that as an opportunity. But 8,600 does start to change the medium time frame range. If we do break that, I'd look for an extension down to 8,150-ish region. And if that area breaks, I'd actually turn for another uh, $1,000 move to the downside overall. By the same token, I do think that Bitcoin is just going to be playing between support and resistance here. Any sort of a move above uh, yesterday's high at 98.80, I do think is pretty damn good for, for extension into the low 10,000s. Technically speaking, though, really want to see a move back above um, 10. What is this area right here? 1085 um, to get to get short term continuation up to 105. 105 on a weekly total closure, especially considering that uh, CME is going to be closing today for the weekly. Any any sort of a close above 105 uh, looks good long term for at least an extension to uh, to 115. And, uh, and then we'll come when, or sorry, we'll come back if and when we do get there. For right now, I think it's just gonna be kind of a quieter day with short-term timeframes uh, ruling the world for now. Um, and, you know, for now, Blue Box is uh, offering up a little bit of support. I do think that we're gonna bounce off, we're gonna bounce a little bit more off this one first and foremost, probably back up to like 96.50. Um, but realistically, I, I, I'm, not, I'm not interested in playing this range right now. I'm still holding my long position. Um, I'm, I am covered, but that is gonna be uh, tr uh, expiring today. Uh, again, so I'm just gonna cover. I'm just gonna cover again, probably using like the so, so, something deep in the money below, like maybe 87.50 strike calls to cover that position once again. Anyways, that's gonna do it for right now. I want to wish you well. Take care, and until next time.